I'm Martha Teeter and I'm your host for Timely Topics with Martha Teeter. My guest today is Mary Zhu. Mary is a Davis citizen, Davis resident, concerned citizen, and we are here to talk to you about Proposition 16, which is on the ballot for very soon, just a couple of weeks from now, June 8th. And we're particularly concerned that people understand this proposition, which would severely limit local communities in California from choosing who they get power from. If passed, Proposition 16 would require a two-thirds uh, majority in order to change power from current providers, which in most cases is PG&E. So, Yes, Martha, it really is a preposterous proposition, and we want to make sure the public understands what's at stake. Yeah, I think that if the public understood the proposition, then they would have a much better chance of not falling for the $35 million that pg and is spending on the rhetoric and for And this. this is why we're here, because the opposition, the vote no on 16, just doesn't have funds to match the millions of dollars. What is it, 35 yeah, million? Yeah, 35 million is expected uh, Which to is be spent. peanuts out of their 1.22 billion profits from last year. So thanks to Davis Media Access for airing this. Uh, this is the people's voice. Uh, it's the poor man's way to get the truth out. <laughs> yeah, and what we're going to do today is we're going to watch a number of videos that have been created as kind of a people's no on 16 campaign. And the videos that we're going to be showing are available for anyone watching this show. And I believe we have uh, information on how to get those videos. Um, and uh, those videos you can share with friends uh, through social networking. Some of the sites actually say how to do that, how to use their sites and embed the uh, videos in to get the word out, to get the education about they're, Proposition they're 16. They're terrific videos. Yes. They uh, sparkle with authenticity. And when I listen to this right to vote, I'm just outraged. Yeah. You this know, there's... There's, I think everyone has a sense of what's right, and they know when they're being lied to. Yeah. And the videos have the ring of truth. They, they really do. I think this first video especially is, uh, is good in that regard. It's a man in the street video about um, how PG&E has effectively fooled this gentleman who's being interviewed at a local Earth Day fair. Yes. <laughs> so we could have that first video. Yes, I am. Okay, so then you can tell us, we can contact you on Facebook. So tell us how to get to you. Okay, my name is Dwayne Christmas. You can reach me at Pastor Darrell DC on Facebook. What is more American than Christmas? Boy, why do you want to vote for the taxpayer's right to vote? Oh, because we have a right to have a say in what our government does. This is a democracy. So let me ask you a series of questions then. Monopoly or competition? Competition. 30% rate increase or community choice of rates? Community choice of rates. The demand for more nuclear power or the choice for green power? The choice for green power. What if I told you that Prop 16 is actually not about the taxpayer's right to vote, but about requiring a two-thirds majority just for your community to consider getting clean, green energy that is not fixed in price? That's horrible. We're already paying too much. We don't have any competition it's only one company that runs everything so whatever they throw out there we have to accept if you increase my pg and e next month who can i go to i can't switch from you and go to another company that's too much power for one company so if you saw that it said taxpayers right to vote act you would have voted for it yes by the wording yes and now that you know more no vote against it no 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 sir no vote against it no 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 sir no vote against it it's obviously this taxpayer had quite a different view of it. This is excellent. We're not going to be the uninformed Dwayne Christmas. No. We're going to be the informed, informed one. Informed, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. When you know the facts, it's very simple. Yeah. I, I think their campaign, which they call the taxpayer's right to vote, 
um, is particularly insidious. On Facebook, I was on Facebook the other day, and I was going to get my mail, and up prop popped a survey which asked, uh, did I want to have the right to vote? And yes or no. I think we got it right, about yeah. uh, right. 100 years ago. We got the right to vote yeah. quite a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, women, 1920. Women, 1920, so, but in the century. Constitution, 1776 or yes. whenever, yes. a very long time ago. And in fact, what the proposition suggests is that uh, they're wanting the government not to have the right to, cho to change energy providers so people should have the right to vote on what their energy source is. So that's their argument. But it's a particularly specious argument because everybody has the most communities, in fact, give people the right to choose in a vote if they're going to change a power company. It's a very small exception if they don't. And if they, if they don't, we also have the right to influence local politics. Uh, apparently, the way to an alternative to competition to PG&E is either through a city council vote, and we vote for council members, or a vote from the electorate. And so this is our right to vote. You know, I think it's very interesting that Jerry Brown is the one who insisted on changing the wording. The name of this Proposition 16 was going to be right to vote, and that's what it would mm. be on our ballots. Mm. And Attorney General uh, Jerry Brown, to his credit, said, that's just so deceptive. So mm -hmm. now it's mm -hmm. the new two-thirds requirement. Well, at least it is on the ballot. And all their advertising still says taxpayers' yes. right yes. to vote. And that's hitting all the major networks. Yeah. It's, it's so heavily infested on the networks that even I caught several of them. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's unusual that I see any of them. Yeah. So, so. so it's not about government power to change. It's about... PG&E maintaining their monopoly on electric power and stifling the competition. I think this is really what it is about. Yeah, and it's the old bugaboo about government is out to get you. Yes. So, uh, you know, if it isn't government helping us, it's PG&E running it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. would you rather have a greed directing your lives? <laughs> and, you know, there's a history of some rather bad things that have uh, gone down because industry has um, shareholders and profits in mind. They have, yes, they have a different motive. And this would really change yeah. th that we would be more concerned about the well being of the people than about the profit of PG&E. Yeah. And That's another uh, local community, I think it might have been in the Marin area where they are, they have in fact gone to community choice of power. Um, the next video, um, uh, I, it's called The Community Speaks. Why no to Prop 16? Because I want local clean energy. Because it unfairly restricts my choices. The communities have the choice to choose who we buy our power from. No to Prop 16 because honest competition works. Monopolies are bad. We have two young grandchildren. One of them has asthma. Being able to breathe the air and, you know, not have dirty fuel coming from coal and oil and things like that is very important. And it's important for all the children of the future. Because clean energy is a clean world. Families deserve the option of a clean energy future. No on 16 because California needs clean energy jobs, local clean energy jobs. And this takes away power from my government to create those jobs and to create clean energy. We've got a lot of solar energy, we've got a lot of wind power, we just have a lot of options uh, due to the geographic location of our state. Public power, on the average, charges approximately 30% less. I believe in free market and will always benefit the community. I'd like to be able to vote uh, on the ability to have clean energy. And also the two-thirds requirement means that if I'm in the majority, I'm still not in the majority unless there are twice as many of me as anybody else. Strengthening our democracy. It strengthens our community. Monopoly is not a game. It takes away our choice. We need affordable power. Not rate hike after rate hike. 
Local jobs are the key to vibrant communities. Let's create a sustainable, healthy future, future for, for all. all. Stop, Stop the, the power grab. No. No. No on 16. Use your power. Vote no on Prop 16. That's a, a wonderful video. Yes, these are real people. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They are real people, <laughs> real jobs, and what they yeah. face is uh, really a um, impossible task. Actually, it's PG&E's concern. I think is uh, primarily economic here. Yes. It's um, fighting the possibility of communities uh, yes. choosing yes. their yes. energy. Yeah. You know what I think uh, is interesting. Uh, PG&E is behaving like a dinosaur. It has invested in a certain way of bringing energy which reflects the last century, really. Uh, they have a tremendous investment in fossil fuels. Now, in recent years, we've wised up. Uh, fossil fuels are not going to be forever, and they're killing our environment. So there's been an impetus for green energy, but that means mm -hmm. new investments. So there's a reason that PG&E is invested literally invested in maintaining the old way of bringing energy because they've sunk money into it. So that's why they don't yeah. want change. Yeah. But we have to for the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the video said 30% less. Their companies going under, businesses going under because they can't pay their bills. Yes. So it's about yes. keeping our economy up. If we have businesses that function, that can pay their bills, they pay taxes to the city, and we can get our roads paved. So mm -hmm. it has huge repercussions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that PG&E is targeting two types of groups. One is public utilities, um, like SMUD, uh, P-O-U's, publicly owned utilities, and uh, these electric service providers that are coming up with alternate energy mixes in their total that are a lot more of alternate energy so a community could effectively choose if it wants more green power. And I think that you've, you have information about um, these publicly owned utilities and their rates are substantially less than... They're, they're quite good. Yeah. Uh, our next door neighbor, Sacramento, uh, SMUD, uh, you know, we don't have SMUD now because PG&E spent uh, what is it, 15 million? 15 million, yeah. yeah. And in fact, they tried squashing SMUD, which began in 1923. Yeah. And it wasn't until 1942, as I recall, that SMUD finally got um, uh, won over PG&E. Mm -hmm. And YOLO wanted very much to have in, and we were locked out in 2006, uh, thanks to uh, PG&E's uh, big money campaign. So, um, Looking at the lowest rates, it's complicated because the rates of energy are based on tiers and usage. But looking at the very lowest, uh, PG&E charges about a quarter more than uh, SMUD. Now on the 25% tw yeah, more. more. Mm -hmm. So if uh, SMUD charges you a dollar, you'll be paying a dollar twenty-five, and multiply mm -hmm. that out, your bills are in the hundreds. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot. But that's just the beginning. Uh, the discrepancy gets worse with higher usage. PG&E penalizes very, very heavily hmm. for heavy usage, and hmm. this will be in the summer. You haven't, you've seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. With the air conditioners, mm. the price goes up to a difference of five and a half times wow. SMUD. No, in other so, words, five, you pay five times more. If you paid one dollar yeah, yeah. with SMUD, you pay five dollars with PG&E. Five and a half dollars, five and a half five, wow. yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, there, there, there is a, there is, yeah. there's a huge difference, and it may, as I said, make the difference between a family making it mm -hmm. or business making yes. it. Yes, yes. Uh, apparently, the powers that be at uh, PG&E have had this in a plan for a long time and there was a video, a short video on uh, YouTube of, uh, of Darby, one of the executives yes. of PG&E, and in it he specifically talks about diminishing the uh, risk of having ch communities choose alternatives to PG&E. And uh, so I think we have uh, that on video as well. the 
the idea was to diminish, you know, rather than year after year, different communities coming in or this or that and putting this up for vote, we thought that this was a way that um, we could um, sort of diminish that level unless there was a very strong, you know, um, mandate from voters that this is what they wanted to do. So um, it was really a decision about um, could we greatly diminish this kind of activity? Mm -hmm. um, the, there's going to be some flap. It'll take place Sweet. between yeah. now and June. Uh, and then, uh, presumably, you know, we'll mend any broken fences after that. So we're uh, we're fences to be mended. Yes. We're, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I call yeah, they'll mend the fence, but I call that a smoking gun. Yeah, I mean, they, definitely. They, there's yeah. a reason. So they are spending. They spent on smud to defeat smud, and the reason they defeated smud is because um, I believe one of the. Uh, um, uh, one of the letters to the editor um, a few days ago said um, that they um, they defeated SMUD by saying that uh, uh, as a big lie that the property to be annexed by SMUD would cost 500 million and in fact two independent studies said that it was much less 100 million and this convinced Sacramento to vote it down although Davis voted 62 to 38 to go with the um, Sacramento Municipal Utility District. Um, it was uh, effectively they used their 15 million to get that to stop. So now they're spending the 35 million trying to get it effectively if they pass 16 that will amend the Constitution of California to make it that two-thirds of any community uh, is necessary to change the power. It's cheaper for them. <laughs> it's more expensive for us. It's more, much more expensive for us how, in the long run. How much have we paid already since 2006 yeah. in PG&E bills that's that true. are 25 to five and a half times more right. than and they would have been paying? Right, and they're going up faster, I believe, than, than yeah. the public yeah. utilities. And they're, I've seen figures that some of the public utilities, I believe in Santa Clara County, are 40% less. That's a, pub, that's a publicly yeah. owned yeah. utility. Yeah. Um, but one, another issue I think that's really important to see where we really have to get the turnout against Proposition 16 out, they have specifically chosen June 8th because, well, who knows, there's an election. You know, there's one in November, but, you know, there's not a big, not a lot of big contests, at least among the Democrats. There are Republican races, the, the governor's race, that will bring out the Republicans. So that brings out the conservatives. You've got a low turnout. You've got a conservative turnout. Uh, conservatives don't like big government. So uh, we've got to get people to realize that they do have a choice and it's going to go away, not just for a year, but for the Constitution. So it's really, um, it's, it's it's really a point. It's a devious perversion of our electoral process. It really is despicable. Yes, yes. And they've uh, used this initiative process, which is ordinarily a yes. system where public citizens, if they have something that wants to get to a vote, they uh, get the required signatures, whereas PG&E has used it for their corporate gain. They've paid people to get the signatures to get it on the ballot. So it completely circumvents the popular process for which initiatives It's getting have come to up. be that if you've got enough millions of dollars, you can run the country. That's right. That's Against right. Against yeah. yeah. our will. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to talk about these uh, groups that are forming, or people, uh, this um, community choice aggregation and what mm -hmm. that means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, as I understand it, it's a community using their buying power of electricity to choose to buy a different kind of electricity, either publicly owned or uh, usually uh, Gen uh, electricity that's g green energy generated in another way. Um, and we have a couple of videos that um, explain this in a little more detail. Oakland recently was considering community choice aggregation, also called CCA. Um, and uh, it basically means the community's right to choose. 
And we have a video on Oakland and a meeting that they had recently in Oakland about this. Tonight we're in Oakland uh, at a meeting for community choice aggregation, which means local communities choosing where they get their own power versus the way it is now for many communities where they get their energy from um, investor-owned businesses where the communities have no say where their power comes from. And tonight we're going to talk to some of the people who are involved in trying to get this its legislation passed in the Oakland uh, government here. Uh, what we have in Oakland, Berkeley, and Emeryville right now is a private utility, a Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E. And so they own the power plants and the, uh, and the lines and they do the billing and all that sort of thing. What community choice segregation or community choice energy is about is it's a hybrid between those two models. Local government, whether it's a city government, a couple of city governments in this case, or a county government, gets to decide what's in the energy mix. They can decide where the energy comes from, which is key for addressing climate change because they can say, we want more renewable energy. San Francisco is actually moving ahead and they filed a plan to have 51% renewable energy by 2017, which is much faster than PG&E is moving right now. The first community choice aggregation was in Massachusetts on Cape Cod, still exists, it was formed 10 years ago, it serves about 180,000 customers. The investor-owned utilities serve the investors who earn a rate of return on the infrastructure that's owned by the, the power companies. The CCA is a non-profit entity, basically, and so it cuts out the whole profit cost and allows renewable energy to become affordable today in California. We see community choices positioned in a way that it doesn't have to challenge the profit center of the, of the utility currently serving uh, the customers, and that's because they would continue to own the wires, they continue to own the power plants that they're now making profits off of. Yeah, I think that explains about community choice aggregation and the history. Yes. It's it's yes. not been around for that long. Very proud since I used to live on Cape Cod that uh, uh. <laughs> Cape Cod was one of the first uh, ones. It's kind of a little yeah. island in a way. Um, uh, yeah. But uh, the we have another video. I think mm -hmm. that uh, I think people wonder, well, what's it going to look like for me at a local level if we go with a community choice aggregation. So the next video is from San Francisco, Clean Power. Good afternoon, folks. Um, I think like many, like many of you, I got this brochure over the weekend from PG&E, and it says, what is community choice aggregation? It says, CC allows cities to replace the local private electric company as the provider of electric power with a government-run program. It makes you think that if your power goes out, you're going to call for a muni bus or something. That's not what we're talking about here at all. Uh, CCA is not about taking over PG&E. If you have a power problem in your house, PG&E will still come out and they will still take care of it. They will still own the transmission system and the distribution system. When you get a bill, it will come from PG&E. You will still pay it to PG&E. What CCA is about is Clean Power SF is going to buy a cleaner, more renewable mix of power and deliver that to PG&E so PG&E can deliver it to the homes and businesses in San Francisco. The initial idea is that we're going to buy that power. The long-term idea is that we're going to generate some of that power in San Francisco. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, I think that makes it really clear that it may not look that radical a change from the local person as to where they're getting their bills, but they're, they're able to exercise some power in um, choosing yeah. where their energy is going to come look, from. Look how far that will take you. You know, Marin County is, I think their program's amazing. It started a week or two ago only. Mm -hmm. uh, they are offering two plans, and they call it light green and dark green. Oh. The, the light green will uh, increase the percentage of green energy to 25%. Now, mind mm. you, PG&E only gets 13% mm. uh, energy from renewable sources, and this is probably because they're locked into fossil fuels, so yes. they don't have the maneuverability. So the light green gives you 25%, and they, uh, the cost will be at PG&E rates or less. Now, you can opt for dark green, which is 100% uh, renewable, and there are people in YOLO who would probably like that as well. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that has a premium of $10 a month plus one cent per kilowatt hour. Mm. Uh, so it's a slightly increased cost, but mm. it doesn't seem phenomenal. Mm. Uh, so uh, there's a great deal of options. It looks exciting. The future of electrical sources. Uh, I don't want to be locked out of this. Uh, yes. uh, it looks like a candy store. I feel That's like right. I'd be a little child looking <laughs> in the window and I can't get in. Yeah. And if you still want PG&E, there is the option to stay with PG&E. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, you know, you have, the, you have a choice. Yeah. You're not locked into anything, but if Prop 16 passes, you are locked into PG&E. We are PG locked in, yes, yeah. right. We are locked into PG&E. And um, I want to talk, uh, mention something about Marin, because that, as you're uh, right, that came online May 7th, very recently. And just before, like at 10 o'clock on May 6th, uh, they made a phenomenal number of calls to customers. Apparently, most of the, uh, if you had trouble with your service or something, you would call and they would say, oh, uh, well, let me tell you about Proposition 16. They called people, they offered them refrigerators, they uh -huh. told them that their power would get cut, you know, or other incentives if they would yeah. opt yeah. for PG&E. They called them up and said, you know, your power is going to be shut off unless you go with PG&E. And the uh, California Public Utilities Commission, which is on uh, one of the sites that I, will, I showed at the beginning and will show at the end, the actual um, hearing of the Public Utilities Commission that has person after person who in the three minutes they were allowed tells their little story about what happened to them the night of May 6th or around that time. So the Public Utilities Commission has censured PG&E and told them to um, desist uh, their tactics immediately. Uh, California regulators this week bluntly warned Pacific Gas and Electric that some of their actions uh, to undermine Marin County's new public power program break state rules and must end immediately. So they were really, uh, uh, really pulling every trick in the book. And um, they can do that with their corporate profits. Uh, in fact, I heard that they were using energy efficiency money to, um, to stop Marin from going with um, their community choice aggregation. Breaking laws? Yes, is, breaking laws. Is uh, not beyond them. Yeah. You yeah. and I try breaking a law, see what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we have, and maybe this is the last topic before we'll wrap up, smart meters. Smart meters. <laughs> Which so many of us now have, and this is this great, you don't, if the dog is out in the yard, you don't have to worry that the meter reader isn't going to be there or whatever. Well, that's perhaps what it seems like. But some of the real reasons are that it costs a lot of money when you have another person on your uh, payroll. So smart meters eliminate personnel positions. And also, it allows them a lot of control. When we get into the summer, we get into those very uh, high usage times where the air conditioning's on, they are able to cut off power at peak times, um, plus charge premium rates, as you uh, pointed out, they have information on in their smart meters booklet. So uh, you may find yourself completely without power due to smart meters. And then the, the third issue is that uh, there are reports, I believe, from Bakersfield that the rates, their power rates, have gone up significantly. Uh, Dan Berman in Sunday, May 16th, Enterprise quotes, um, Worse yet, PG&E may be as incompetent as it's greedy. Complaints about PG&E's 2.2 million smart meter program started rolling in last summer from Bakersfield and points north. A typical gripe, my bill was around $170 all summer long. The smart meter was installed in my first bill, shot up to $290. I haven't changed my power usage. The new meter is a scam. So if, if you have the same problem, PG&E customer service is a joke. So um, they may not f even function properly. After initial denial, uh PG&E says, yes, there's storage problems with their data. The software, there's software problems, there are hardware problems. Uh, and strangely, 
the investigation of these meters will not complete till after June 8th oh, election. Yes. Funny thing about so, it. So, yeah, it, it's <laughs> peculiar timing. You know, I say just tell us the total kilowatts billed before and after yeah. the meters for any community. And let's see if they're the same. They're it should same, be yes. somewhere in the vicinity. Mm. You know, could I say a word about the program, Smart Meters program? Sure, because okay. they have the option of opting into a particular Smart Meter yeah, program. Yeah. Just maybe briefly well, it's, highlight it's, some it of the points. Well, it sounded very good to me. Uh, and they sent out I, this booklet. I re received this glossy um, multicolor booklet, 10 pages inside. You want to learn about the program, you've got to squeeze down to just this very small portion on almost the last page. And what they say is, if you sign up for this, uh, you will pay a premium during peak hours in the summer from 2 until 7 p.m. on no more than 15 days of the, of the month. That's 15 days of the month you will pay uh, premium prices, but in exchange you get reduced rates the rest of the month. Okay, uh, so what are the rates? I mean, that's the bargain. Uh, two for one. Well, let's see, two of what and what is the one of that? Uh, nowhere in this booklet, nowhere on their website could I find data. It was Greener Fresno that described this and they said, well, look, the rate is preposterous. It's $1.07 uh, per kilowatt hour during the peak hours and they can run this 15 days of the year during between 2 and 7 p.m. Uh, the highest rate before the smart plan was 44 cents. Oh. So it's more than twice that. Oh. Okay, so what's the reduction? It better be darn good. Uh, no, the reduction even doesn't even go down to the lowest tier. Mm. Uh, it stays at a high tier, and the higher the tier, the greater. So uh, wait oh. till summer. If you sign up for smart plan, um, I don't want to even see your bill. <laughs> it will be asked. This is a yes. rate increase yes. disguised as a plan to help you save money. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's Just, amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, close our discussion here with another video, and then we'll come back briefly um, to close off. Uh, this is a video uh, which is a, a, a really nice wrap that summarizes a lot of the issues that are um, important. Uh, in this process, and it's a very creative uh, way to uh, educate yourself on the issues. As I walk on home and get my mail, once again I feel my face go pale, damn pee. G&E deception looking so clean With another weekly flyer for Prop 16 I really hate to trip, but they got me so hot I really want this corporation to stop With the lies about their real motivation Maintaining its energy domination E.G.E. we say no Prop 16 Stop messing with the energy machine E.G.E. we say no Prop 16 Stop messing with the energy machine Power, the power and the money, minute after minute, every kilowatt hour. I'm an educated full sustainability on my mind. Got my hand on my heart and a gleam in my eye. Your front group on common sense coalition. It's a sneaky ass way that you go fishing for control of our energy market. I say PG and E, why don't you just park it? We homies out here know your campaign is a lie And if we don't shape up, we all gonna die From your nukes and toxic fossil fuel power plants The best you can do is to say that we can't Have community run energy, what is it worth? You raps are willing to sell off the whole damn earth We ain't fools, why don't you clean up your act Instead of buying votes with your political pack PG e and E, we say no on Prop 16. Stop messing with the clean energy machine. PG e and E, we're as cold as ice. What we want is a green energy paradise. PG e and E, we say no on Prop 16. Stop messing with the clean energy machine. PG e and E, we say no on Prop 16. Stop messing with the clean energy machine. PG and E, you're as cold as ice. What we want is a clean energy paradise. 
the most enjoyable mm -hmm. rap Thank song. You. Yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love and what, what uh, our viewers out there can do um, is to go to some of the websites uh, that we've shown you about uh, where these videos are available and uh, use your social networking to share these videos and um, uh, send them to friends. In fact, I believe the first site, there's a little, you can click on a page, will tell you exactly how to embed each of these videos, uh, the, their videos, um, in, the, um, in a message. And I think both of them may do that too. Uh, and send it to your friends. Post it on Facebook. Um, many different ways, but get the word out. And get it to our communities that there are only sources, television, and not a lot of local access the way we have in uh, Davis. So, when you don't have 35 million, you have you to work harder. You have to work harder. So, work <laughs> harder. A, a, a people's campaign to combat uh, PG&E and preserve community choice. So, keep demo keep democracy for people. Keep our yes. Keep, keep democracy for people. Keep democracy alive. Yes. So we want to uh, suggest that all of you tell your neighbors and vote uh, no on Prop 16 on June 8th. June 8th. And uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us. And uh, thank you, Mary, for my pleasure providing Martha. a lot of the uh, nice details that you provided. It's good to be here. Yes. Thank you.